Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about how to set up and load an agarose gel. So here I have an agarose gel. We have another video showing you how to pour an agarose gel, but here we have an agarose gel that's already set. Agarose, of course, is a polysaccharide that comes from uh, seaweed, so it is highly purified. We've mixed it with a fancy salt water buffer, let it solidify inside of this casting tray, and we are now ready to load. You're going to remove the stoppers from your casting tray, and you're going to remove the comb. Remember, the comb's purpose was to give us these slits inside of our gel. Okay, these are our wells, which is where we will load our DNA sample. Our gel is ready to be put into our cast inside of our gel box here. You want to make sure that it's very important when you put your casting tray inside of your gel box that you line up the black line with the black line in your box and the red line with the red line in your box. This will ensure that the charges are in the correct place from when you're running your gel. If you do this backwards, your DNA will run behind your wells and into the buffer as opposed to through your gel. To place your casting tray inside of your gel box, just grasp it on either side and place it in the center. So now it is inside of your gel box. We're going to be running an electric current through here, which will help us to mobilize our DNA to move through the agarose gel. I have our buffer. This buffer is TBE buffer, so it's a mix of tris base, boric acid, and EDTA. And that will, again, will help us to mobilize the DNA to move through. You're going to pour the buffer into your gel box, and you're going to put just enough buffer in here to submerge, to fully submerge the gel itself, but you don't have to fully submerge the casting tray. The reason being is the electricity, the current that we're going to run through here, is going to pay take the path of least resistance. So if you fill your gel box with a lot of buffer, your current is going to run up and over your gel as opposed to through your gel. Therefore, your DNA will not mobilize and move as far through the agarose gel. So just enough buffer to make sure that the gel is submerged and you cannot see the wells peeking up from outside of the buffer. So now our gel is set up and we're going to load our samples. I'm going to load 10 microliters of my loading die here into my first well. Of course, as always, to make sure we don't cross-contaminate, we need to place a tip on our pipette. I'm going to draw up 10 microliters of the loading die. Be very careful if you're using loading die. It's not necessarily toxic, but it can stain. Draw up the loading die. To ensure you have a good clean load, you can actually wipe your pipette tip on the edge of a paper towel. This will ensure that when you load your sample, the residual loading die that is stuck to the outside of the pipette tip will not just disperse into the buffer. The easiest way to load your sample is to make sure you have a lot of stability on your pipette and your gel box. Best way to do this is to prop your elbows up on the table so that you can make sure that all of the stability is needed to not puncture the well when you place your pipette tip into the well. Remember, these wells are just little buckets inside of the agarose gel. The wells do not go all the way down to the bottom. This is so that we can hold the sample in the well. And the agarose here is just like jello once it's solidified. So just like you can stick a fork into jello, you can stick your pipette tip straight through the bottom of the agarose gel. Now, as I mentioned, the best way to do this is to prop both elbows up on the bench. Also, use your other hand to guide the bottom of the pipette. You can hold it like this, you can hold it like this. I find the best way to do this is to rest my hand on the side of the gel box. This again will give me flexibility but stability. I'm going to place the pipette tip into the buffer. You may see a little bit of the die disperse. Uh, that's because this loading die is pretty heavy, so it may disperse a little bit into the buffer. Wait, make sure that your pipette tip is actually in the well, though, uh, before you press down on that plunger. Otherwise, you're going to lose all of your sample into the buffer and it will not stay in the well. This loading die also adds weight to our sample, so it ensures that the sample will stay in the well and it allows us to use gravity to do most of the work to keep the sample in the well. So now I'm going to place the pipette tip into the buffer and then I'm just going to very gently and just barely place the pipette tip into the well. I know that the pipette tip is in the well because I can wiggle the pipette tip back and forth just a little bit and I can see that that well moves, but I'm not far down enough that I'm stabbing through the bottom of the well. To load my sample, I'm going to slowly press down on that plunger 
until I reach the first stop. Now normally when we're pipetting a sample, we pipette to the second stop to release all of the solution. This is the only time that we don't do that because pressing to the second stop here would push an air bubble into our well and push the sample up and out of the well. So I'm pressed to the first stop. I have my sample loaded into my well. Now, if I were to remove my thumb from this plunger, I would draw the entire solution back up into my pipette tip. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to keep my thumb pressed down, pull my pipette tip, pet tip up and out of the well, then remove my thumb from the plunger. I'm finished this, with this pipette tip. I want to make sure that I don't cross contaminate with another sample. So I'm going to dispose of the pipette tip and get a fresh one. So now I want to show you what happens if you load your sample and you do remove your thumb from the plunger while the pipette tip is still in the well, which is one of the most common problems we see with gel electrophoresis loading. So again, propping my elbows on the, the bench here, guiding the bottom of the pipette tip with my hand, placing the pipette tip into the buffer, ensuring that it is in the well, and slowly pressing down on that plunger. This is a very good load, but now I take my thumb back off the plunger. As you can see, I've drawn the buffer or the sample back up into the pipette tip, and this is now mixed with buffer. What that means is that my sample has less weight to it because it has less of the loading dye in it. So if I try to load this back on top of the sample, I may not have as much of the sample staying in the well. Additionally, these wells only hold a certain volume of liquid. If I'm trying to load the exact same volume on top of what's already in there, again, we may not fit the entire sample now. So as you can see, if I load this back on top of that sample, okay, you can see that it is now coming up over the top of the well just a little bit. So you want to make sure that you keep your thumb pressed down on the plunger until you've loaded that sample and removed that pipette tip from the well. The last thing that we need to do is to place the lid on our gel chamber here. Make sure that it is on tight. And you're going to plug your cords into the power supply. Again, black with black, red with red. You want to make sure you keep the positive and the negative charges consistent so that we can accurately mobilize the DNA through the gel. As I mentioned before, in other videos, smaller fragments of DNA will migrate faster and will move further through the agarose gel. Larger fragments will remain behind. These are plugged in. It's ready for me to run a current through. And you can run this for as long as you need. Remember, smaller fragments, since they move faster, don't necessarily need to be run as long or as high a voltage. It depends on your particular experiment. We tend to run these at about 130 to 140 volts for anywhere between 20 to 45 minutes, depending on how uh, dispersed we need the fragments to be. So I hope you've learned a lot today, and we will see you next time.